Mary Meet, Annie here. This video is in response to the pagan perspective topic of the week, which is on spiritual materialism. And the viewer who suggested this had three basic questions they were asking. And the first is, is it hard for you not to lose yourself and your spirituality and all the stuff relating to it? I'd have to say for myself a resounding no. I like stuff. I like my things. I like my pretties. I don't feel that I depend upon them. I enjoy them. I don't feel I get lost in it because, in the end, none of it is necessary. So, for me, that's not an experience I've had. I can't say that over the years I haven't explored partnership with groups where there was a focus on the things as necessity. I didn't have a problem with that because it was a litmus paper which made it very clear to me I enjoy your company but what you celebrate, how you celebrate, is not of interest to me. So it was a good litmus paper. I think the only thing that I have probably encountered regularly is the expectation we all have vast libraries and of course the money it takes to maintain that aside from the fact that we don't all live in circumstances where we can have a public library for the world to see what our taste in reading is so the things of tools and spheres and balls and runes and decks and pendulums and all those things they come and go in the sense that I focus on different things at different times and none of them in the end are necessary. Early on, for the greater part of my younger years, we didn't have money, so there wasn't materialism. And I think that taught us that while it was nice when we could invest in some pretties that we enjoyed, that it was just absolutely not necessary. So for me personally, I would say stuff has not gotten in my way. The second part of the question is, is a vow of poverty just another extreme or is it credible? Now I don't know where our watcher comes from. Poverty is certainly not part of the Tradwickan experience and in fact acts of pleasure, the things that bring you joy, are part of our full experience of life. That doesn't mean one might not take a conservative approach in not wasting and reusing, but in general there is no expectation of Asceticism, if that is what our watcher was thinking of, religious asceticism, it is so not a part of Tradwicka. And one of the reasons why what I celebrate pleases me is I have the freedom to enjoy life and everything it brings. Now that doesn't mean I have to buy something in order to enjoy life, but it means if something pleases me, I have no guilt at all about totally enjoying it. I remember when I was looking into feng shui and the energies of feng shui that I actually stumbled upon, and I'm not going to remember the name of it because it inspired me, but I didn't take further study on it, but the, there was a a Hindu version of feng shui which agreed with the principles that you don't need duplicates of things and you don't keep things that are broken or things that have outlasted their time. So it did totally agree with that. But what it added to the things in your life was that one is permitted to have things for no other reason than they bring you joy. They bring you pleasure. And that to me is very much in line with my Wiccan values. Now, I do live conservatively. 
because in the world we live in and the destruction that we are putting upon the mother, being environmentally conscious and conserving and living, making a lighter imprint on the land is very important to me. But as far as there being a need for our spiritual asceticism to deepen our spirituality, to me, my path and Wicca has almost been the opposite of that. That in order to totally enjoy the fullness of life, one experiences all aspects of it. There is no need to deny yourself unless it's unhealthy for you or another or unless it gets in the way of your spiritual quest. So the answer for me would be that that's not happened to me. And there is no expectation on me from my Wiccan belief system of asceticism at the spiritual level. I understand it. I understand why some might take that route. It's not the route I have taken. It is not the way I experience this world. A third part of the question was, it, is it easy for you to see through that side of life and appreciate or disregard a spiritual teacher, practic practitioner, or peer accordingly? I would not... I'm trying to think of examples of where I may have felt in judgment. Possibly... There have been times when it appears that someone was more interested in the trappings, especially in Tradwicka, where there are so many tools and things you can collect, that someone was very interested in the trappings, but didn't have a relationship to them or really a spiritual reason to have them in their life. Collecting for the sake of collecting. I can think of instances where I have been uncomfortable because there was expectations by teachers of payment in many different forms expected of students. And I'm not saying I disagree with a teacher's ability to devote themselves to teaching being supported by potentially bartering or charging. One of my teachers had a great devotion to service and was able to devote her entire life to it because there were arenas in which she did charge for her services and I, lost, I learned a lot from that. However, if someone could not afford, they got the same attention as someone who could contribute in some way by services, or paying, or bartering. The interesting part of the question to me is would I appreciate or disregard a practitioner or peer accordingly? And that's interesting because as the neo-Wiccan movement has expanded and we meet so many people who have so many different experiences, I have in social circles or circles I have visited or earth-based circles that I have run outside of my formal tradition, run into people who were along for the show of it. They had vast collections of things. They had huge libraries. And that is what seemed the most important to them. So the question was, what would our relationship be? Would we respect or disrespect someone based on that? I can't say I respected or disrespected them, but there was a big pullback from me realizing that we probably didn't have anything in common. And in a couple of instances, uh, it did mean that I was not interested in spending more time with that particular group. So I can't say that it's always been something that I could overlook. Overlook in the sense that in the end I didn't care. I wasn't going to judge, but not overlook in the sense that 
You, you choose the club to which you become a member and who you feel the most comfortable with and where you feel at ease. And there have been instances where there has been like a block or a I'm just not comfortable here that came out of the things it always went along with the things and the exactitude of you must do to do 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 everything had to be a certain way and always seen that things were woven around that too too much attachment so in general no this has not been a problem not something I've had to deal with very often definitely not a problem for me personally I love my pretties I can do without my pretties completely and totally at the end of my training with my first priest after we'd spent a year going through elemental balancing and becoming very intimately bonded to each of our tools as we learned each of the elements. We were then told one day to bring our tools to his home for one of our training sessions and he took them from us. And then we had a month at which we were not permitted to use them and that was the month at which we were supposed to write and conduct our first ritual for the group, Sans Tools. At first it was a shock, because I would say I was a youngster, I was only in my 20s, and I did depend upon those tools. I thought they were the conductor. And he did the right thing. His teaching was they were so not needed. Very powerful learning, and I guess I've lived with that all my life. I still like my rituals and my pretties and my tools, but stick me outside on a starlit night or a hot summer's day when the sun is just beating down on me and my power is equivalent and complete and total without anything other than what Goddess has given me by giving me life this time round. So for me, materialism does not get in the way, but there is also the complete freedom I have as a traditional Wiccan, that it's about enjoying. It's about reveling in this life and using it completely, tasting it and feeling it and smelling it and touching it and just totally immersing yourself in every experience, which includes beautiful things and experiences that do involve things and purchasing things and the joy should be as complete when they're not there, but there is no reason in my tradition and in my spiritual experience not to experience life fully. I wish you all mirth and reverence. Merry part.